Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. Today I'm going to be in Calendly, um, or however you want to say it. So Calendly is an automated scheduling system that you can set up for your personal or business use that allows you to set up different event types to send out links to folks to make it much more easier and automated to basically schedule an appointment with you. So like if we go here to one of this one here, so say the coaching call, and we go to view booking page, you can see that when someone clicks on this link, they have the ability to choose a specific date and then time of your availability. And what I mean by availability is that over here on our Calendly settings, we can go to our availability tab and we can set in Calendly when we are available. So we can go and dive into each individual day and put in a time frame, put in our time zone, like I have my EST time zone here, and then we can even make it vary depending on event types. Now, this wouldn't be that great if it didn't sync with other calendars. Now, this syncs with all of your normal calendars, such as Outlook, uh, Google Cal, GCal, um, any other calendar that you may use, uh, whatever the other oddball calendars are. I use Google Calendar, uh, iCal for Apple. It syncs with all of them. Now, I'm not gonna go over every single integration, like if we click on this tab here, I've used Calendly very, very easily with my Shopify store, my Salesforce and MailChimp campaigns, uh, Google Meet, and so much more. You can look here and see that there are a ton of very popular integrations that very much play well with Calendly. So now I'm gonna hop back over to the homepage here of Calendly, and we're gonna walk through piece by piece the different things that, that we have here that we can really set up to make the most out of Calendly. Now I will say this, Calendly is a free service, but there are some things that you have to pay for if you want to take it to the next level. So what do I mean by that? There are, like if we go here to the appointment page, you can see where it says powered by Calendly. If you want to brand this or make this look you know, different or even remove it altogether, then you would need to be a part of their paid service. Okay, so then you could remove that little banner there on the page. So we're gonna hop back over to our Calendly homepage here, and as you can see, I have two events set up here. These are called events. Now, if you wanted to, you could just link them to your calendly.com slash whatever your username is, and that'll bring up your two events like you can see here. Do you want to be a guest on the podcast? Do you want to get a coaching call? You can select the event here, and that will then direct them to where they can select the time and the day at which they want to schedule your meeting. And because it syncs up with your calendar, if I add something over here on my Google Calendar, it automatically books that time slot over on Calendly as well. So how do we set up an event and how do we get this going? When you open it up, when you log in, I log in with my Google account, you can log in with your email and password, it's really up to you, right? What I'll do is once I'm logged in, go to event types here and then go to the big blue create button there and then we go to an event type or a one-off meeting. If you know that you're gonna have something come up that's not exactly one of these specified event types that you have, uh, and you just want it to be one-off, you can do that as well. It'll work exactly the same. But if we want to create a new event type, and we say, we want this to be a one-on-one -on -one or a group meeting, so we'll say this is going to be a one-on-one, -on -one. and again, you can choose whether you want one-on-one -on -one or group, and then we'll give this a name. So we'll go ahead and give this name, we'll say coaching, okay, if I can spell correctly here. We will say coaching. Now, you can add a location, by clicking the drop down menu and you can actually add right here the different locations you've got phone call Google meet zoom Microsoft teams go to meeting and you can even go to custom here so what I want to do is I'm actually going to go we'll say it's going to be on zoom so we'll click zoom here and then because it has a zoom integration we can even go to zoom integration page and connect our zoom and Calendly accounts, okay? So click that here, it'll open up a new tab. We can then connect our Zoom to our Calendly and it'll automatically send out the Zoom invite link. Now that is a beautiful thing. So we'll go ahead and edit this. If we think we wanna edit that, click the drop down menu and we'll just go to Google Meet, we'll go to update and we're good to go. Now, description, this is where you tell folks what they're going to, you know, to expect on the call or whatever the meeting is. So we'll say coaching again, just to make it simple for this tutorial, you can give this a color code just for you. So you know kind of what it is. And then what you'll do is you'll click the blue next button here to be taken to the next page. This is where we define how long it's going to take, uh, how far out they can schedule it. So if you want them to schedule it 
you know, beyond 60 days from now, you can even up this to 90 or 120 calendar or business days, which are obviously Monday through Friday. Or you could even specify if you have a special promotion going, you can even go within a specific date range. So we're going to go ahead and go to just 60 calendar days. It's going to be a 45 minute duration coaching call. And then what we're going to do is we can use our existing schedule, which I've already showed you. If we go up here and then go to availability, this is my availability. This is the template general availability. If your event is going to have different hours than that, you can go here and go to set custom hours and you can choose Sunday through Saturday, the times, and then you can even delete that if you want to take off a day. And then you would have that as your custom hours for that specific event. And these are called events again. So now we got to go want to add time before or after your events. So if you know some of the times these run long or you have to have 15 minutes of prep, you can put 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after, and that will block that amount of time in your Calendly and your linked up calendar. Next, we'll go and click the blue next button, and this is where all the magic happens. Coaching is ready to accept events. Now you have a specified or a designated URL that they can go, and once they click on this here, you can see it's now called coaching. There's your description. Here's your availability, and you're good to go. Now, you can turn these events on and off by going into these events and clicking the on or off button in the upper right hand corner. If you want to see what it looks like for folks who click on the link, you can go to view live page and that takes you over here to where I just showed you. Now, I'm going to go back to our homepage here on Calendly and show you now what it looks like from your homepage. Now, I have this here, another event, coaching event right here. Now, it makes it very easy for you to be able to just copy the link by clicking this copy link here, It'll copy the link open up a Gmail message and shoot that off. What I like to do is put it in a pre-made email that I send out to my podcast prospective guest or my prospective clients. And when I send that email, I said, if you'd like to schedule a call with me, boom. Or you can even have that link on your website, mask as a button, whatever you want to do. The beauty of that is right here. Here Now, if you want to go back and edit or configure one of your events in Calendly, you can click the gear icon here, go to edit. Uh, you can clone this to copy it and add a new name. You can save it as a template, or if you wanted to, you could even delete that specific one. So if I go here, click the uh, little settings gear icon, go to delete, hit yes, that will remove that one all together. Okay, so that's kind of where you are there. Now, schedule events. So we have event types and then scheduled events. As you can see here, I have no events scheduled. But if you do have one that has come through Calendly, you will see that right here. It'll be scheduled exactly right here. You see pending and past events as well. Now, workflows is another tab. This is a little more professional. You can actually send thank you emails. You can have automated reminders. Once you uh, have had the meeting, you can use these workflow templates to go and send things pre and post meeting to make you look a lot more professional. And again, this would be the subscription pan. You know, this would be a part of the subscription plan. So you can go to upgrade to pro. And as you can see here, you can go $12 per individual for a year, or you can do 15 per paid monthly if you don't want to confirm to a year. That's kind of their pricing model. They are not a sponsor. I've just used them for years, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity for me to show you guys how it works. Lastly, if we go over to availability, which is our tab up here next to home, this is fairly simple. Not sure why I should have to show you this, but you basically select your days. Like I have Monday through Friday. If I wanted to be available on Sunday, I'd click Sunday, and then I would put the time frame. I'm available 8.30 a.m. to, uh, say, uh, 2 o'clock p.m. on Sundays, and then the changes are automatically saved. If you realize, oh, my wife's mad at me. I don't want to be available on Sundays. You uncheck Sunday and you are good to go. You hit the addition symbol here that adds the day, just like that there. You hit this little guy here. It'll actually allow you to copy the times to multiple days to make it much more quicker and efficient when you're sitting here doing this. Now, pro tip, time zones are a big deal. I deal with folks in India, in Indonesia, in, uh, you know, all over the globe. And so because of that, Calendly does a good job of let other schedulers I found have issues with time zones. Calendly does not. So I select my time zone here. And then when someone schedules a time zone or schedules a meeting with me, their time zone automatically converts and it lets them know when and where to be their time zone. And it matches up beautifully. Okay. So these are our working hours. We can go to a new schedule here and we can call this say exclusive. If you want to even offer after hours or emergency hours, you go to create here and then only allow specific events to schedule on that. So people with those specific 
links, you're kind of seeing how this is working, right? So go back to working hours and you are good to go. Now, default schedule. If you have multiple schedules up here, like working after hours exclusive, make sure you put your working hours as your default because when you create new events, this is going to be the one that is the override and automatically helps, okay? Uh, under our account here, I'll show a few different things. We can go to account settings and see that we have our account here. We have our branding. If you want to upload your logo, your links linked up to, you know, it's going to be your direct link to your Calendly scheduler and then your login information. I would, if you're a business or a brand, definitely do a better job than I've done as far as branding and putting your uh, profile pictures and links and things like that. That'll all be done within your account information. And then what we can do is we can go to apps here uh, and then you can see we can have an app for uh, all of the different browser plugins, Android, you have iOS, uh, for Outlook, all the fun things that you normally would get to expect, okay? So if you have any questions about Calendly, how to use it to schedule meetings or uh, automate your kind of scheduling system, definitely, hopefully, this video helped you. If it did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.